In this video, we're going to be discussing doors and windows. So once you have the walls of your room or house or structure created and your dimensions are locked, I only have my width and my height, my overall dimensions, um, we need to come to our architecture tab. And right next to our wall symbol, we have our doors and we have our windows option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with doors first. Notice that the ribbon changes with all of our icons of tools that we may need for our door implementation. In our properties panel, we have um, a similar drop down to what we saw with our walls, except for this time we only have our single flush door loaded. Um, Typically, we would use a single flush door and all of the dimensions for the different size single flush doors are also preloaded in here. All right, so what we can do is we can select any of these sizes. If we don't need that size, remember we can come to edit type and we can duplicate that door. And let's say our height of our door is actually, I'm gonna make this up, 88 inches, and that wasn't an option for a three foot wide door. So I'm going to select OK. It's going to update the size here under the type category, but notice how it's not changing the size here, um, and the width is going to be staying the same. So what you would need to do is come in and manually change that size press OK, and now in my dropdown, I have that new size option. So once I select that new size option, what I can do is I can just come over to my wall, I can click where I want those doors to go, and I'm good to go. So what you're gonna notice as you place the doors is you're gonna get more dimension lines and extension lines pop up. Revit automatically defaults to dimension to the middle of a door, which is why the extension line is coming to the middle here. And this extension line here is going to be coming to the center of your wall. So if you don't want it to be in the center and you want it to be the, to the inside where we measured from, you would just need to adjust that dimension. Now, what you would need to do is take the length of the wall and the width of the door, and the width of the door we need to divide by two because that's, be, um, and that is because our extension line is cutting in half that door and measuring to the half uh, waypoint. So one foot six inches is gonna be the halfway point or midpoint of our door, and then whatever your wall length is. So you can click on that dimension, one foot six inches, I'll just make it an even two feet. I am making up dimensions, so make sure that you're looking at your drawings. And then it'll go ahead and update the placement of that door on the wall. Now, as we know, the swing of the door goes against the wall here. Um, and so that's where these arrows come into play. You can toggle your swing so that it swings the right way. You can flip either way. Um, and so you have to use these arrows to kind of figure out, okay, which direction do you want your door to be? Once you have your door orientation and your dimension all set, you can press that escape key. It'll kind of exit out of that. And then you can come in and press it again, select your door, make sure it's the right orientation, make sure it's the right placement with your size. So I'm gonna click on my little circles to move the witness line. I'm going to call them extension lines typically, but it's actually called a witness line. I can update my door dimension here. So I think this one is about three feet, eight inches. I have no idea. Again, making up my dimensions. And then you would do the same thing here. Click on the door, orientate it properly, dimension to the right places, update your dimension if you need to. This one, two feet, oops, two zeros is not gonna work. And then you can place your doors. So let's say this door is not a fixed door and this door is not a fixed door because they're not, they have windows in them, All right? Actually, none of these doors are fixed doors. But in my panel, I only have a single flush door. Um, single flush door doesn't have any windows in it. So we need to load a new door, find a new door, 
that gives us more of that the qualities of the door that we have. Um, and so instead of coming to duplicate, we have this load button. And when we go to load, Revit has a bunch of different categories of symbols that are preloaded that aren't loaded into our properties panel. So we're going to come into the doors folder. And as you select individual Revit files for the symbols, it'll give you a preview in the top right hand corner. And you can use your arrow keys to toggle through these really quickly. And none of these doors are the different types of doors that we're seeing inside of our, our room right now. So I'm going to actually go into the commercial folder and kind of look at these. And you're going to notice some of them are starting to have some windows inside, which is nice. Um, our main entrance to the door or to the classroom looks very similar to that door. It might not be exact, but I'm going to go ahead and open that one. And then we get a dialog window that has all the different sizes. And notice it's asking for the width, which we already dimensioned or measured from our sketch. But now it's asking for the height. How tall is that door? And that's really important too. So if our door is three feet wide and we need to figure out how many inches tall or feet and inches, notice that it's feet and inches in the height column, but the type shows just the inches. So you can look at it either way. And what we need to go ahead and do is we need to figure out how tall that door is. All right, so I'm just gonna pick one um, again at random. So once I find my dimension, let's say, you know, that's, that's the size that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. It's gonna change the size in my type category. And then it's also going to change the size in my dimension section here. If that is not what you want and you're not finding the size in that, that area, again, you can duplicate that door, create the custom dimensions that you need, change them in the width and the height dimension as well, and press OK, just like we did for the walls. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And then I can go ahead and place my doors where I need them. I can flip my orientations if I need to. And then I would need to come back in and dimension the placement of those doors appropriately. Now, you can move this witness line or extension line to measure from the outside or the inside of your door, um, but typically it's going to default to the center. So it's a good practice um, to kind of make sure that you're using that properly. As I come in and dimension, again, we have that little dimension symbol. You can click on it and then click off of your dimension. Your dimension will turn black. Click back on your dimension and then you can lock that door so that when I try to move it, it doesn't move. So we can lock that dimension in place. So that is how you go ahead and place your doors, create a new door, load a new door, duplicate a door. Next thing that we're going to do is windows. And these are very similar to what we experience with our door options. So in our properties panel, you're going to notice that we have a fixed, a casement, and a double hung window. Um, these are more of our standard options. But again, if you're not finding what you like, you can come to edit type and you can load more windows. So I clicked on the load button. I'm going to double click on the windows folder. And then again, you can use your arrow keys to kind of see the different types and styles of windows. And then in the name, it'll tell you what type of window it is typically um, so that you know for design purposes what type of window you're using. So if you want to use any of these, um, especially when we get into your personal um, house floor plan towards the end of the semester, all of those window families are there. Again, if you need to duplicate the family to change the size, um, this, the name of the type will change if you duplicate it. So you do need to come in and change the height and the overall width of your window if you do need kind of a standard size. So how do you place windows? So I'm, I'm active on my windows command. Again, when you click on that, you're going to become, the ribbon's going to become the modify and place windows option. And then I'm just going to show you what the fixed window looks like. 
All right, so my window is going to be here. You're going to notice that the there's going to be a line where the actual glass of the pane is going to go ahead and be. And you're going to notice that you have these double arrows like the door had. Um, you want the glass of the window to be towards the outside to protect you more so from the elements. But notice you can kind of flip those and look at them either way. All right, and you can give yourself a nice little preview of where those window placements are going to be. And again, as you go ahead and place those, the, um, the extension lines are going to be dimensioning to the center of the window to the center of the window. So you can measure from center point to center point how far apart those are. Right? Once you're done with those dimensions, again, obviously you want to go ahead and lock those so that your windows don't move. So you're going to have windows along this wall, um, and that is how you go ahead and place those windows. Again, if you're not happy with the size of the window and you need to modify it, you would need to duplicate that window, whatever type it is, make sure it's the right type of window first, and then you could go ahead, change the size here, It'll update in your type name and then change your height and your width and then place your dimensions for your window placement. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you create your windows, place your windows and change either the style by loading a new one or duplicating a new window.